I don't know. I mean, it, it just it feels really good, honestly, just to to get a win and, and finally win at this track. Um, like you said, you know, we've led lots of laps here. So I mean, to lead lots of laps here, you have to be good. You know, at a number of different races through the, through the different years. But um, <clears throat> yeah, this is just a, a track that I really enjoy. Suits my style, and um, you know, just haven't haven't won yet here. So was good to uh, to do it today. You know, I knew we were gonna have a, a good car. We just didn't qualify as good as we had hoped and honestly drove through the field way better than I thought that I would. And um, yeah, they did a really good job on the you know, pit sequences to cycle us in front of people. And then from then on, you kind of just try to manage your race. And um, Denny was really good too. So he was gonna be hard to beat without his you know, mishap. But uh, you know, once whatever happened to them happened, you kind of opened the door for a few more guys to, to possibly win. And you know, we kept ourselves in the game enough to uh, to get it done. You know, I got in the wall some point in the third stage and then um, you know, kind of had to nurse it to the next pit stop. And then things just worked out. Your team executed when we needed to. And then the second question for both of you guys is that this is now win number 299 for Hendrick. 300 is up next. How important would it be for you guys to be the ones to get that milestone? Um, <clears throat> honestly, I mean, sure, I think all four of us, you would want to be the one to do it. But but really, you know, I, I think 300 is just a you know super big number. So I think for me, I'm going to be just as happy to see you know, William, Chase, or Alex win, you know, number 300 for Rick, as I would be for myself to win. Um, you know, I think when you – which Rick has already stamped himself in this sport as the greatest car owner of all time. Um, to reach another milestone like 300, it's just uh, that's a that takes a, a whole team you know, throughout decades and decades. So um, you know, number 300 as a whole means more than you know me winning it or any us individual person winning. So I hope we can one of us four can do it next week. And um, you know, I guess that means Rick will be at the track every week now until we <laughs> until we win. So um, we'll look forward to having him there. Yeah, well said by him. And I, <clears throat> you know, I would just add that um, when, when you think about the Hendrick 300 wins, you think about the 90, however many from Jeff, and the 80 something from Jimmy, and and all the people that you know with Rick built our company and the history that it is. So I, I agree with him. I don't. Yes, we would love to have it just for the little bit of bragging rights in the moment, but then next will be 350 and 400 and all those things for, uh, you know, for Mr. H. So um, it's just, it's amazing to be a part of a company like this and, and you know, the, the leadership that Mr. Hendrick has to, to all of us and to the company is uh, really special. So to get that for him would be, uh, be pretty awesome. All right, thank you. Pete? Uh, hey, hey, Pete Iacobelli with the Associated Press. Um, for both of you, another company question. Uh, it could have been a little disappointing around the shop when Chase and Alex don't get into the playoffs, but yet, you know, you guys come out here, you win, William finishes fourth. It's a strong start for, you know, wherever you guys are going to wind up in this uh, chase. That's got to say something about the resiliency and, and what the, the direction of, of this program is. Yeah, no doubt, and, and all four teams are working really well together uh, right now. And the one thing that I would would add, because we were in this position last year, the nine team is still very well in in the playoffs for the owners, you know, championship, which is a huge deal to Mr. H. Um, I know that Chase and Allen are going to fight tooth and nail to make that happen, and and I know they had a good day today. Um, so so there's a bit of you know, uh, I don't know, excitement around that. You know, having three cars in. And uh, Alex was well on his way to a top 10 or maybe even a top five finish tonight. A Alex had a great race going, and, and he and Blake have been working really hard this year. So, um, yeah, the way we're all working together and, and the way Mr. H, you know, just keeps keeps it on the rails and, and keeps us going, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Trent? Trent with French Trent Warsham with FrenchRace.com. Uh, kind of going off of what you said about working well together with everybody, um, you mentioned coming back, uh, he mentioned uh, coming back from deep in the field to win this race. And William Byron also had a deep starting position and was able to come through the field and for a great position as well. Um, how much information is actually shared between you guys now as a team, you know, with, with this being the playoffs and you guys also wanting to win it for yourselves, uh, but you still have teammates doing it as well? Yeah, we, um, we have so many meetings every week where um, the crew chiefs are together and, and we talk through, you know, setups and strategy. The drivers are together, they talk through you know, car sensations and, and, you know, what, what expectations are for the next race of, you know, how to execute the race or whatever it may be. 
Um, and, and it's really the culture that Mr. H wanted to create. He wanted to create a culture where, uh, you know, we, we were very um, open and honest with each other. And, and we have some pretty private, you know, conversations as far as that goes. But it's it's the four teams together, you know, the four drivers, four crew chiefs, everybody working together. Um, and, and I truly believe without that strength of, of all of us being together and working together, um, you know, we wouldn't be as competitive as what we are. It, it takes all of us to keep it going. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool to be a part of. Good next to Dustin. Uh, Dustin Long, NBC Sports. I have a question for both of you on that uh, situation at the last pit stop. And I want to ask for, for Kyle, your perspective is what did you see with, with Reddick and then with Harvick going down pit road in that moment? I know you, there was a lot going on and you pulled off, but can you take me through it from your point of view? And Cliff, how much uh, was that a game changer of, in its essence, eliminating Harvick? And then it's just, you know, between you and the 45 and who can win off pit road. Um, for me, was Harvick leading right then? Did he just get Redick to lead? Was yeah, Reddick okay. was first. That's what I thought. And Harvick was second. And Harvick was <clears throat> called to pit road. And then Reddick was told to come down. And he, I guess, said he missed it because of the late call because they were trying to react to okay. Harvick. Yeah, so from, from my vantage point, you know, I was fourth. And, um, yeah, I mean, Harvick was really good that run and was close to Reddick. And then, you know, I saw we got the call. They called me into pit. Um, and I seen, you know, Harvick and William both pull down. So I was just going to follow them. It looked like Reddick was just, you know, going to have to pit the next lap, you know, got caught late. But um, <clears throat> then as I was pulling down, you know, I saw, I think, Newman spinning. So I was like, uh, I think I need to stay out. So I stayed out and, um, Thankfully, it worked out. I guess William was able to get back out um, before you know, committing to pit road. But I'm guessing Harvick, you know, being the you know so close, I, he probably didn't have any time to react to it. And um, yeah, it took him out. I mean, he would know more about what happened. But uh, for me, yes, it was pivotal because I went from now fourth to second in line. And then you, you have a good pit stop. You come out in the lead. There's 40 some laps left. You hopefully you can lead the rest of the race. And that's what happened. So um, yeah, it worked out for us. Yep, uh, pivotal, like you said. <clears throat> I mean, if we're being honest with ourselves, I think there was four or five cars that had they gotten the lead, you know, it's going to be hard to pass. Like, I think if we'd gotten in front of Denny, it would have been really hard for him to pass this. Harvick gets the lead. I don't think anybody passes him. I, I think the top four or five were very, very equal together, um, you know, just in the way the track position was kind of staging itself. Uh, so to your point, to have one less of those cars was was nice. Obviously, hate the miss fortune for those guys always enjoy racing with Rodney and Kevin but uh that was a big deal because it set us up to be second coming down pit road have a good pit stop come out with a lead um you know and then there's still a couple of good cars behind us just not quite as many go to Bob and then the Matt uh, Bob Parker is Fox Sports well for either of you is there anything that should should the wheel should the rule be tweaked or is there anything that should you know because seem like Harvard I guess Harvick has the option to just drive down pit road without pitting but I'm curious if there's anything else that should be done in that situation or you got to have a line and there's got to be a rule and sometimes you're just going to get bit. I mean, I think we've seen it play out so many times in, in just these, uh, you know, these really intense moments um, over time in cup racing. I mean, I, I feel like I remember a couple of years ago, a handful of years ago, Kyle Busch had something like that happen. I feel like it's happened to Carl Edwards before. Um, it's really, really tough. And, and we talked about it before the race, um, talked about it a lot with, with my engineers, and it's one of those things that if you're committed, you're committed. We know what the rule is, and unfortunately, if you elect to pit, then it is a penalty. Um, I don't have a great opinion other than we just know what it is. Matt? Matt Weaver, Sports Not for Kyle. Um, what stands out more to you in this moment, the fact that you've knocked another kind of crown jewel off the Southern 500 or the fact that you know that you advance in the playoffs and you've got another chance to win a championship again? Um, well, I mean, had I not won anyways, I feel like we would have a chance to win the championship. But, <clears throat> I mean, really, honestly, I, I'm, I'm happy to win at Crown Jewel, a place that you know we've been close to winning at, a place that we both have wanted to win at for a very long time. And then just to start the playoffs off good, um, I would have been you know, happy just to get a good, solid race in. So to, to win, it, it feels – you know, obviously better, and, and I hope that we can just put multiple weeks together like we did today. Not necessarily win. I know we'll be capable of winning every race in the playoffs, but really I just want to 
put together solid races from start to finish, get stage points, you know, get some stage wins would be great. And then, you know, get some good finishes at the end of it. So yeah, we were able to do that today. And um, it's been a long time since we put a, a full, full race together. So um, yeah, I just want to build on that. On the, the crown jewel front, like is this one that you're kind of aware of that has kind of eluded you and that you kind of circle and say, hey, I don't have Darlington or the 500 oh, yet yeah. and I want that one? Yeah, definitely. I mean, this race only, all these crown jewels only come around once a year. So, you know, there's been lots of times where I've left here, you know, bummed out and sad that, you know, I had a good shot to win and it just didn't work out. So <clears throat> I felt like I was going to have that feeling again today, you know, but um, you know, things are able to, to work out and um, yeah, get, get a, a really big win. I mean, and this is in the top three or four, you know, for the races, you know, crown jewel prestigious races of our season. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I think the only two I don't have would be the 500 and, you know, maybe the Brickyard 400 if it comes back to the to the Oval. So, um, yeah, you always want to win the big ones, um, but, but really just winning a race, it, it feels good. Okay, we're going to wrap with Jerry. Jerry Jordan, kickingthetires.net. Um, Cliff says you guys feel like y'all are behind a, a little bit on points. Uh, but, you know, we were talking on Thursday, you wanted to focus on – on, on each race and does this give you a little bit of uh you know a relief though to, to have the couple of weeks to, to to focus completely on points and not have to worry about you know advancing so to speak um no i mean not i i don't really feel any differently as far as that goes um after when you know in 2021 we were winning we want to race in each round um maybe not the first race of every round but still you know when you put together good races, you know the points are going to take care of themselves and you're going to advance. So um, it doesn't take any pressure off. It doesn't take any focus away. It does, to me anyways, it doesn't, it doesn't give me a different goal. You know, I still just want to go and, and run a good race from start to finish for nine more weeks. So um, <clears throat> my mindset doesn't change at all. Um, sure, it's great to be locked in if you do have a mishap but um i don't i don't plan on having a mishap and also tonight you uh you got into the wall a lot of people got in the wall how hard was it to control the car this track is known for that but you know you you, you bounced off of it pretty hard a couple of times yeah no i mean i the good thing with this car is that you can graze it some um obviously when you slap the wall that's when things bend I probably grazed the wall at least 20 times a night or more, all all in three and four. I got it a little bit in, into one once, um, but really only there was only two times where I thought that ooh you know maybe it did some damage there. Um, the first time was there late in the you know or middle of the third stage. I just uh, I just didn't get a clean enough downshift and it kind of hung into neutral between fourth and fifth and stayed there for quite a while and then it finally dropped into fifth as I was like close to the center of the corner and went to fourth and then I was I was just lower off of the wall and when you're lower you know, when you're I watch you know broadcast all the time and people are like you know just give it some room you know just get off you, know, you don't have to run right next to, well it you have a lot less grip when you don't run right next to the wall so I was a little bit off the wall because I had made the mistake on entry and then by the time I got to fourth it was already sliding and then I you know slapped the wall and then that's when I lost a bunch of time. So um, I'm sure it's bent a little bit, but uh, thankfully, you know, not not broke, and we were able to to finish and, and still get a win.